Cluster analysis is a multivariate technique, and what what that means is not just that you have a lot of variables or that you have a number of dependent variables and a number of independent variables. There's there's a more restrictive description of uh, multivariate data, and what it really means is that you have a, a bunch of observations that are not uh, formulated in a model, but that are assumed to be correlated. You have, just think of a bunch of X variables that uh, have been gathered in some domain, but on different dimensions that are, we don't know what the patterns are. And you can structure it even more formally. You can say, well, for each row, each observation, let's say I'm collecting information on three different variables, um, such as for a person, you know, waist, the me measurement around the waist, measurement around the chest, and height. You would you would assume that you would find you would find clusters of patterns among those variables that that fit. Well, often. The, the clusters or the patterns, the groups, are not as evident. And so, so th that's what these clustering analysis techniques work. And they, they, do, they, do have, they, ha they have something in common. Um, what you're doing is, almost in all cases, you're computing some measure of the, the similarity between the observations. And when I say observation, think of a spreadsheet, I mean a record, a row, and you may have seven different variables that have values recorded for each row. Okay, so what you need to do is for each observation, somehow you need to be able, you, you have to have some algorithm to compute the center, the centroid. And if you can do that, if you can find some reasonable way to compute a, a centroid value for each observation, then you can start to compare the distances. That is, how far each, uh, the patterns in the centroids, how far each um, observation, the centroid of each observation is from the other ones. And you can look at it that way. So they all pretty much function on this on this notion of similarity or dissimilarity i say distance when they're apart when they're far apart then they're dissimilar when they're when they're closer together they're similar what does distance mean well you can have euclidean distance or straight line distance you're not talking about two dimensions if you have five variables you, it's not a two-dimensional space so you have to be careful about how you conceptualize the separation of the centroids for each observation when you you know you can have two three five ten variables on each um, observation so there's, there's Euclidean, which is the absolute distance, regardless of the number of dimensions. There's Manhattan distance, which means you uh, plot the distance between two points at right angles, as if you're walking the streets of Manhattan, and you can only go blocks north, north, south, east, west. And, and there are various other ways to do it. Okay, so um, we're going to look at k-means. K-means is probably the most commonly used. Um, what K-means, K-means looks at um, distance between groups or centroids, but with K-means you are required to uh, specify the number of groups in advance. Okay, so you, uh, you tell it, um, let's take a look here, we're going to use the iris data and we're going to set the seed so we do that and we're going to make a copy of iris which is always a good idea when we start modifying the data set so we just assign iris to iris 2 if you if you've forgotten iris was about flowers and there were 
four predictive variables, all numeric, and then we're predicting the classification into the, the species of iris. And there were three species, Virginica, Versicolor, and Setosa. So pretty reasonable to assume we've got three different groups here. And what we're going to do is we're going to per perform a cluster analysis without species present, just on the basis of these values. And we would expect them to show up in three different groups. If, if the species are clearly separated in terms of these values, which we don't really know for sure. But so we're going to do it in two groups and three groups and see what the cluster, the clustering looks like. And um, so we get rid of species by if you in a data frame if you assign a column to null it just it gets rid of it you can you could also delete it other ways too but so now if we go back and we look at iris 2 after we did that species is gone we don't we don't have that variable anymore and then you just run k-means on the data set and you specify the number of clusters so we say okay what what does it look like what's the pattern look like with three clusters and um, notice this is, is an assignment statement when you enclose any statement in parentheses it expresses the value as well as performs the assignment if I did this same statement but I did not put it inside parentheses you it would it would it would it would create this object and assign the results to this object but we wouldn't see it unless we explicitly um, expressed it when you any any sort of assignment statement though if you it's a shortcut to see the results and perform the assignment so we re, we retain the fitted object but we also see the generic results and, and what do we see here well um, it's showing us this, the uh, group membership. So we have, when we say three, three clusters, it assigns 62 of the rows to one, one of them, 38 to the other, and 50 to the third. And it's giving us the means for each variable, which is not the same thing as the centroid. Um, you, you really, what you, you're assigning the, the records to groups, not the individual uh, variables so this however clustering vector does show us by row the assignment to the three clusters and the way the the um, the criterion or the fitting function for k means is to um, minimize the sum of the squared error terms the distances of each point from the centroid within each cluster so it moves points to three different clusters such that the final membership, the final assignment of those, of each point to the three, which is fixed, clusters, minimizes the, the sum of the square distances of each point from those centroids. And um, this is typical. Note this is not just cluster analysis. Reducing or minimizing the sum of the squared error terms is pretty much, um, you know, uh, applies to almost any sort of linear function or nonlinear function as well. You start calling it deviance, but you're still talking about the same thing, the difference between the predicted value and the actual value. Okay, so you minimize, specifically with k-means, you minimize the within cluster sums of squares by cluster. And that's the between sums of squares divided by the total sums of squares so what does that mean uh, well cluster analysis is one of those techniques it's really easier to take a look uh, what, what we're trying to do though of course is a practical application we're trying to assign correctly assign the the records to the flowers with the flowers removed so now we can take a look we can tabulate the assignment these assignments one two and three to the actual species and we get this, which is very similar to a confusion matrix. What we see is the, just like we did with the uh, random forests, Setosa, Setosa is very easily and correctly predicted. Membership in the Setosa species 
And that's because the, the combination of the values for the variables that describe Setosa are different. The centroid of those variable values for Setosa is very different and distinct from Versicolor and Virginica. And Versicolor doesn't do too badly, but Virginica, you know, it's not clear by looking at this, you could make an argue, you could argue that there are really only two clusters, not three. Because this one is blurred and really a split between the Virginica and Versicolor. So let's with cluster analysis, it's easier to plot it and take a look. And we can also plot the centroid of each cluster. So with points, so we, we here's the plot, and um, it's still two by two, so I got to clear that out. Here's the plot, and then then we add the points, which reflect the centroid. It looks like three groups, pretty much, except the black and the red are kind of mixed, and that's the versicolor and the. Uh, the other one, not Setosa. The greens are the Setosa, and they're clearly separate. Okay, but the, these two, Versicolor and um, Virginica, are distinct a little bit, but not too much. But it's easier, it, it's helpful to plot the center. So we do that with points. Let me zoom this. These asterisks are the center of the centroids for each of the three clusters. And you can see easily that some of the black ones are closer to the center of this red, and some of the red ones are closer to the center of the black. But looking at it in two dimensions is misleading because it's a, it's a four-dimensional object because you have four variables. So some of them come out, and uh, but nevertheless, you can see that these are not clearly distinct, whereas the green ones all are. Green is Setosa. So let's go with the two. K means is probably K means in the hierarchical clustering is probably the most are probably the most popular, and um, we're not going to go with the two. Okay, so we just we'll leave it at that. We'll look at two. We'll come back to that. And we'll look at two with another approach in just a second. 